Ciao, jewelry makers. My name is Joey Balistrieri. I'm the girl with the long Italian last name. And I woke up this morning and made my coffee. And it is chilly here in Florida today. So I started thinking as I was sipping my coffee about making a really fast and easy but just adorable fall inspired pendant. So I used this owl that I had purchased from the Softflex company over a year ago, maybe even two years ago, and I decided to perch him on a branch and do a little cha-cha style dangle beneath him of a, a whole bunch of leaves so he looks like he's in a leafy tree in the autumn. And so I'm going to show you how I did this because I do have a second one of the owls. When you purchase them, you've got a set of two, I think. But I also wanted to share something with you that I do for my own jewelry wardrobe. I have made a copper chain that is just a chain with a small lobster claw clasp and then its coordinating connector. And I have also done the same thing with a antique bronze one and it is just a plain chain. And then also in my jewelry wardrobe, I've done some leather cords with a simple lobster claw closure. And the reason I do that is so that, because I make a lot of jewelry, so that I do not have a million necklaces hanging in my jewelry wardrobe, I will create my pendants with a fairly large bail. And that way I can take this pendant and wear it on leather, I can wear it on copper, I can put it on the antique bronze, and then as the seasons change or as I get some new pendant idea or new beads to work with, I can enjoy the making the pendant and then just string them on the chain to coordinate with my outfit for the day or my shirt and top, whatever, for the day. So I just thought that was a good idea for those of us that make a lot of jewelry. I know that for a while before I did this, I just had oodles and oodles of necklaces hanging in my jewelry wardrobe, and it started to be where I could barely even see what I had made. So I came up with this solution, and I thought it would sh I would share it with you because it has really worked for me. And then every time that I create a pendant that I'm doing for myself, I just try to remember to make that bail a little bit larger than we normally would so that it's interchangeable. So just a little idea. So let me take away my extra necklaces and set Mr. Owl here as our little inspiration piece and I will show you what went into him. So this was the package from Softflex Company. I think they came in a set of two, but it's been so long since I ordered these that I might have purchased two. And I recently saw them on their website, so they may still be available. But owl beads are not that hard to find, and I think this technique would work for almost any owl bead that you found. So I'm going to change this one up a little bit from what I did here. So I have this, I recently got in the mail, this Jesse James beads into the wood bead mix. I'll just give you a little peek if you guys have not seen this. It has these stunning cylinder beads, I meant to say, that almost have like the wood grain on it. And they had a nice little selection of ceramic beads and copper findings and these little acorns. So that is where I have taken a few of my design, my design elements for this, the little copper acorn. And it's a connector. It has a loop at the top and the bottom. And I just love ceramic beads. And I thought this one was quite pretty with the owl. And so then from my supplies, I am going to use this red check glass leaf. And one of the reasons, let me just pull this in, that I chose to add a little red into this one is because I have this leather cord that I made for myself in my jewelry wardrobe and I thought this pendant would look really nice on leather. So I also have a little selection of jump rings and I'm doing copper. 
I think I'm going to do all copper on this one. I also have these check glass leaves with the beautiful finish on them. Let me show you what those are. These are from Potomac Beads and they are check glass leaf drops and it's a crystal vitriol and they are check glass. They're 10 by 6 millimeter. So there is those and then if you all might want to use the same thing. Let me show you. These are from the Beadbox Bargains website. And there was approximately 12 pieces in a bag. And there's the number CZ3415. And these are 11 by 13 check pressed glass maple leaf beads. And it's an opaque red rose gold wash. So they are just lovely. And you, you know, if you've watched my last few videos, you know that I've been watching the runway shows and I have noticed a lot of different trends and different things on the runway, but a lot of red is really on trend right now for this season. So I also pulled out of my supplies. These are findings from the Beadbox Bargains, just some various metal leaves, this little copper leaf, these little antique bronze leaves. I just put them in my tray. I'm just showing you some of the things that I pulled out of my supplies when I started designing this pendant. These are the leaves that went into my sample piece and I did use these leaves and the ones that I just showed you to make this little cha-cha leaf like he I just started thinking he's in a you know he's on a tree branch in a leafy tree so it was really fun and I started out literally with just one and then I thought oh I'll add one and the next thing you know it, the whole tree branch is full of leaves so it's you know the creative process can be really fun and joyful so if you did want to know what these are here these also came from the Beadbox Bargains website and they are uh, 7 by 12 millimeter top drilled check pressed glass cherry leaf beads and this is an alabaster cinnamon spice color so I thought it was really pretty with the finish on this owl bead and then I had this huge selection of antique bronze leaves from Amazon and I've had these in my supplies for a long time so I'm sure if you search that leaf charms or bronze leaf charms you'll find something similar or even exact so that is what I used I just chose a couple of them in the size that I thought was the right scale for my branch and my owl so that's where that supply came from and then his branch is also this was bag 14 in a past bargain bead box subscription box and we had in that box whatever month it was we had these gigantic very organic toggle clasp closures and I never used them I actually never made a huge enough piece of jewelry that it would work for me and so they've been in my supplies and I took the connecting bar and that is what is the branch that Mr. Owl is sitting on. And then that gave me the loop to dangle anything that I want. So as I said, I'm going to change this one up just a little bit, not do it exactly the same. Okay, we also need for this is, let me pull the bags in. I'll need my cutters. And let me show you what I, my wires are. So for these very small little leaves that are top drilled across the front, which is going to make us um, wire wrap like a briolette, I'm going to do a little different wire wrapping on that, but we do need a finer gauge wire for it. So this is a 22 gauge. I just took a little bit off. This is a 22 gauge round medium temper German style wire and this is the antique brass color. So I guess I am mixing sort of the brass and copper but they're very warm metals and they look very autumnal to me and I really love it. So the other thing I have here 
is this same bead along German style wire in the antique brass color, but this one is 20 gauge round medium temper. And so that's going to be the wire that wraps around the branch and goes up through Mr. Owl. And I will tell you before I start actually working with this wire, I will tell you that this is not an exact science. It's very organic. It's very free form. And so I would advise to give yourself, be generous with the amount of wire that you cut because when you start wrapping this, I just want to get my nylon jaw pliers as I'm explaining. When you start wrapping this, you it's just not an exact science. You can't be certain how many wraps you're going to want. And I wanted my owl on this pendant. I wanted him stationary. I didn't want him to be spinning around. So I did a couple of extra loops. That's really impossible for me to know that I would have done that. But that I was following the path of the wire and that is is what I needed to do to make him sit properly. And then even if you can see at the top, the holes on these beads are quite large. And so I wanted to make this thicker and give a chunkier look to my bale. So, you know, that took some extra wrapping and some extra coils. So I'm just showing you that in order to tell you to be generous when you cut a piece of wire. So I've got maybe 13 inches here. You know, I my mat is about 14 inches long and I tend to not get out a ruler. I tend to sort of eyeball it and say, okay, that's how much I have. So how I got started is I took my little branch and I put this 20 gauge wire through the hole. And I do want this to be messy and I do want it to be very organic. And this is probably the trickiest part is just getting started because you're starting out with quite a long piece of wire and I do want it to be tight on there. And I, and it, you know, I'm just really working it with my hands and just pulling it. And like I said, I want it to be like a branch. I, I want it, I want it to be imperfect. I want it to be brambly and the way things are in the woods. So I am literally just wrapping and looking at where my wire is landing and I might cross it over. And again, I was generous with my wire because I do need to save out enough to go up through that owl bead and to make a nice wide bale, a nice large looped bale. So I am pretty happy with that. Now I'm going to come in with my pliers and I just want to get my wire, just make that wire behave. So on this project, you definitely have to be the boss of the wire. And so if you can see what I'm doing, I just, I need it, I need my wires to come together here. I just need to encourage them to come together because I need to string on my owl bead. So that's what it looks like. And I'm going to give this a little bit of a twist here. As I said, the holes on that bead are quite large and this wire does fit right up through the middle. So not a perfect science, not an exact science, but you would create something that looks like that. And on this part, I do want it to look branchy. So I'm not going to do a lot of it now, but I'll just show you. You can come in with your pliers and give that a little twist to mangle it a little bit the way a tree branch would be. They have, you know, the tree branches have twists and turns. And so we want it to look like that. We want our owl to be obviously sitting on a tree branch. So see the holes are quite large as you can see because two strands of 20 gauge wire go right through and he's still spinning. So I just want him to sit down there nicely where his little feet appear to be sitting on the branch. And then here's where it's unusual because now we have two wires coming out of the top of a bead. 
So I'm just going to hold on to my branch and my owl and just wrap around this wire because again that hole is pretty large and I'm sort of filling up that space because I want it to look thick there I don't it's a, I want it to be the same scale I want my wraps to sort of match the scale of this large bead okay I'm gonna leave that wire just hanging out there for now and so he's still moving a little bit but that's okay now I need my my bent chain nose pliers and now I'm going to create my bail at the top of Mr. Owl. So I'm going to give that a bend. And then I want to make a nice large bail. So I'm going to use my round nose pliers. And I want to, his little ears on this particular bead do sort of get in the way. But just be gentle and work your wires in there. So I want to get that wire down to the fattest part on my round nose pliers because I do want a nice large bail so that I have the option to interchange this on different chains and I want it to be able to go over the clasps. So I'm doing a regular wrapped loop. Like I say, there's a little bit in your way on this because I wanted to save this wire out so that I can have a look and see if I want to do more wraps and make this base of this bale thicker. So I'm just going to get my, before I take my plier away, I just want to get my loop nice and straight and centered. And so look, I have a really nice bale that will interchange on pretty much any necklace that I have made for myself. So I can switch from a chain to a leather cord. So now I'm just going to do the wraps like I normally would. And like I said, his little ears get in the way. And I want this to be messy. Again, I'm thinking what it looks like in the woods. So I want it to be thick. I want it to be messy. I, I do fuss with it a little bit. It's, it's just my nature, but um, again, not an exact science. And like this one, is still going down through the bead to the branch. So you have to remember to hold on to that to have control of it. And I just want to get that wire. If you could see, I'm wrapping the wire around his ears and I do want to cut it off on the back of the owl. So if you could see, I'm just pulling it down and getting it down behind his ear. And I do want to be careful not to break his ear off. So I'm going to get in there very gently with my with my plier and I want I don't like the way this is looking in the front. I am not the best at doing messy wraps. Okay, so I think I can get rid of this wire now. The second wire. And so you know the way the way that wire ended up, it has already stabilized him a little bit, which is what I want. I, I want him to be facing forward all the time. But I don't want to have a sharp... I'm holding him, him and his branch in my hand. Let me just play with this a little bit. I, I, don't, I don't want to have a sharp... It's really not sharp, but I don't like that I can see the end of the wire where I cut it. I, it feels like it needs to be tucked. Did I get it? No. Yeah, between his ears and the large hole, if you guys do get this exact bead, you'll be managing that a little bit. Okay, that's great. I'm happy with that. So now let me get a hold of my bale once again, straighten it out, and finish wrapping down. Again, I want, I want it to be messy, but I do want to fill in the space. Let me unwind and go down a little bit. That is also why I encourage you to be generous with your wire if you're going to do this because you just it's very organic and you just don't know when you might need an extra wrap or a little bit extra wire because of the nature of this bead. Okay, it's chunky enough. My 
my bale is fat enough, but I also want it out of the way because I do want to be able to see his ears. I don't want his the top of his head and his ears to be covered up with the wire. And yeah, I found when I was doing the other one that working around his little ears was a little challenging in certain parts of the project. So he looks really good, but I am going to squeeze this a little bit. I just want it to be... I feel like I need to turn my loop a little bit. And he is positioned. He, I love the way he, this wrap turned out because he is really stable on his branch and not wiggling around. And so I'm just going to do one more thing with this loop. I just want to just tidy up my loop just a little bit. Okay, he is gorgeous. Now, since Mr. Owl is on his branch, let me move some of these things out of my way. And now we are going to take another piece of, that's the 22 gauge, which we need. I need another piece of the 20 gauge wire for this bead. So let me get a little piece. And let's straighten it. I always like to start with straight wire. Then I go from put, putting my own, go to putting my own bends in it. So I am going to grab it right about there. And this is going to be a double wrapped loop. So one on this end, string on my bead, and then one on the other end. And I don't want it to be too big. This can be quite small. And I'm not going to close that loop because I think that I want to add it right there. So I'm going to give myself a little bit of space, sort of open that like a jump ring and string that on and then close up this space. I love my bent chain nose pliers for this kind of thing where you have like things that you have to work around, the branch, the extra wire wraps, the owl's ears. I find that these bent chain nose pliers, if you can see, I can hold on to everything and have it out of my way. So I tend to use these a lot. And I am going to give this a few wraps. And I also think I need to this ceramic bead has a large hole, so I think I'm going to need to find a bead or a bead cap. I want to do something just to finish off that end. So let me pause the video at this point and see what I want to use for this bead. I'll just show you quickly. So I guess I could do it plain. Let me pause and look through my supplies for a moment and see if I want to leave it plain or add something. In my selection, my own stash of copper bead caps, I found these filigree bead caps that fit perfectly over this ceramic bead. I love the open pattern on this bead cap and I thought it just added a little something extra to this ceramic bead. So that's what I'm going to use there. And so now I'm going to turn Mr. Owl upside down and I want this loop to be going in the same direction. And so I am going to do a wrapped loop on this end of the bead. So same process, round nose pliers. You know, I always think of, I just made the lady's head and now I'm bringing her scarf around her neck. That is my visual picture. I deal with dyslexia, and you may notice in my videos sometimes that I turn things wrong or that I say, oh, that's backwards. I have to disconnect it and, and fix it. It's because, and if any of you know about it, you don't even always see that something is backwards. That's 
the problem with dyslexia as it looks right to you even when it's backwards or opposite. I just dropped a plier. So let me just tuck that little that little bit in. And Mr. Owl has a ceramic bead hanging beneath him. So I did make a little bit of a design decision while I was looking for the bead caps. I am not going to use these vitriol uh, leaf beads on this owl. I think I am simply going to use a jump ring and hang this little copper leaf from the Beadbox Bargains website. I have always loved these leaves. I'm going to see if I can do it with the smaller jump ring because I do sort of want the jump ring to disappear. I don't want it to be too big. But let me see how it looks and how it hangs. That's what I had to do on this one with the little cha-cha leaf pattern is literally just determine piece by piece as I added it in if it was hanging properly and if it looked nice. So I am not sure if I want to hang it from the loop or hang it from the top of my, um, let me rephrase, hang it from the loop on the branch or from the top of my wire wrapped loop. Let me see. It's a little bit hard to see how it will hang when I'm still holding on to it, but let me try. Mm. Let me try it on the loop. And the nice thing about this leaf, I love the way it's made, but I also love that it's two sided. So on a design like this, where it's obviously going to turn around, you know, spin around and, and move as it's worn, you, it looks good on both sides. This jump ring might be a little bit too small. I would prefer to use the small one. I would prefer not to put a big one, so I'm going to try to make it work, but it is tight. Let's see if I can even get my plier in there. Yeah, it's a little bit tight because the loop on the bottom of this branch is quite thick. But let me just give it one more go because I prefer this to a big jump ring. I have it there. I just have to get a hold of it to close it with my pliers. I think I have it. Let's see how that hangs. Oh yeah, that's really cute. That's really, really cute. I would like it to hang forward though. I may have to redo that jump ring. Let me try one more thing. So I hesitate sometimes to do a project like this on camera because it is very unpredictable. It, you're literally making the design decisions as you go based on how things look. And it's very hard to lay out exactly what I've done because I don't know exactly what I'm going to do until I see how it looks. But it's such a fun project, something like this, that is so freeform and just organic. And if I sat and made 50 of these, no two would be alike. It's, you know, it's just not something that you duplicate. But I love this kind of a project because my creativity is just so happy. <laughs> my creative side is just so happy when I'm making something like this where I have no rules. Okay, that's a little bit better. It hangs a little bit better underneath Mr. Owl. Okay, so my last thing that I'm going to do is this red check glass leaf. And I think I'm going to create my own head pin. I'm going to do a little tiny swirl underneath this check glass leaf as my head pin. I thought about using a ball head pin, but I think I've always liked to make my own swirls. It's fun and it adds a little something extra at the bottom. So I'm going to start by making the teeny tiniest bend or turn in the wire that I can. And I leave my, my round nose pliers in that hole when I'm doing this 
just to get that spiral started. And then I don't want to mar this wire because I don't want to disrupt the finish. So I'm grabbing it firmly but carefully with my bent chain nose pliers and just pushing that wire around to create my coil. And then once you get it going, you can come in with your nylon jaw pliers. Sometimes it's a little hard to hold on to a small spiral with nylon jaw pliers, but on a wire like this that has this pretty copper finish and I don't want to damage it, I make the effort to like grip it with the <laughs> nylon jaw pliers and make it happen. Like I said, this is a project where you are the boss of the wire and you have to make that wire behave. <laughs> okay, I like that little spiral. Now I'm going to turn the spiral into a head pin by bending that wire straight up. So I just made my own head pin with a spiral at the base. And I'm going to thread on this beautiful red leaf. After I have it wire wrapped, I can straighten that up, make it so my spiral is directly under my leaf. And now I am going to, let's see, let me see what direction I need my loop to go in. I want it to hang forward, so it needs to go sideways. So I'm going to grab my wire and everything is parallel, the spiral, the bead, and my bend is all going to go in that direction. And then before I close this up, I have a habit of closing up my loops when I meant to connect it, but I'm going to remember this time. So now I just want to open him and he gets attached to the bottom of my ceramic bead component and Mr. Owl and his branch have to hang upside down again. <laughs> Just close that up. And again, these, chain, these bent chain nose pliers are wonderful when you're managing a piece like this where there's a lot in your way but you still have work to do. So it is great to get a hold of things and still have control even though there's a lot going on on this piece. Okay, I did want to tighten this down just a little bit because I do want my leaf to stay facing forward and not spin around. Let me see what kind of a little tucking motion I need to do. Now I'm just going to take a moment to tidy everything up, but it's actually pretty straight. Okay, and I think that is all I am going to do for my owl pendant. I think I am going to be happy with my owl pendant just the way that it is without the cha-cha leaves that I did on the other design. So I did come over and add another one of those little copper leaves. I did not use the acorn from the Into the Woods bead mix from Jesse James. I love it, I think it's lovely, but in the end I just thought my pendant was going to end up being too long. I was pretty happy with it that way. So I also did not end up doing the same thing for my second pendant as I did on the first one, but I did want to show you the technique that I used for wire wrapping. If you can see, this is a briolette style wrap, but when you do those with the side to side, you generally are wrapping the two wires, so you end up with a long stem of wraps on a piece like this and I didn't want that on every leaf I on every leaf I wanted it to be more like a normal 
tiny bale. So I'm going to show you another little method that I do for wrapping this type of a leaf, even though I'm not going to connect it to my owl pendant. I really think that I'm going to be happy with that and I will, will probably wear him on this leather cord that's in the burgundy red color and I think it's just a beautiful autumnal style necklace that I could wear with sweaters or even a long sleeve t-shirt and jeans. I'm really excited about that. So the little acorn did not get used and I'm just going to show you an interesting way, just an alternative way to wrap a bead like this. So this is 22 gauge wire and this is what I used on my first sample piece to wrap all of those tiny leaf charms. So I'm going to put this through the hole and now normally with a briolette style top drill like this, you would bring these two wires up like this and then normally we would have one wire going straight out. Let me pinch it together a little bit more. Normally we would have one wire going straight out and one wire that we would bend it up like that. And then this one would be going straight out and we would wrap both wires around the stem. But what I'm going to do to make sure that my wraps are a bit smaller is just pinch those two wires together and I'm going to basically ignore this shorter wire and take my pliers like I normally would for a wire wrapped loop and I have it turned backwards and I'm going to bend this one at a 90 degree angle just the way we would if we were starting a normal wire wrapped loop and I'm just going to ignore that this one is here and come in with my round nose pliers and just exactly like we normally would wrap that around the barrel of the plier rotate it bring it around and now I can remove the pliers and now I'm going to come right at that point if you can see where I'm cutting and trim this wire away. So now if you can see what I have there, I am going to be able to wrap that second wire right into my coil on the stem of the tiny bale, and it makes it less metal presence there. So let me just show you. So I'm just gonna do a normal wrap and just encase that second wire right inside the wraps, going all the way down. Just filling in that space. I'll make this my front. I do have a little lopsided loop there so I can put my plier in and tidy that up. This 22 gauge wire is so fine. I did not do a beautiful loop on that one, but I can straighten it a little bit. But I just wanted to do a little sample, even though I'm not going to add this to my owl, my second owl pendant. But I just wanted to show you a little bit different way of wrapping a briolette style bead, or in this case, a leaf. So that way, I have not a super long stem because normally, as I said, that one wire that would go out, you would have to do a few wraps on that and then cut it. And then your long wire, you would make your loop for your bale and wrap down to meet the others. And it gives you a very long stem in here. And so on these smaller ones, I didn't want that. I wanted just it to look like normal wraps. So that is what I did on this first pendant. That is the method that I used. So I hope that's an interesting little wire wrapping trip uh, trick for you. That's a tongue twister. And I just thank you all so much for being with me today and watching my creative process. This one is very free form and not an exact science, but I hope that it sparked your creativity and then you 
picked up a technique or two that maybe you can use in your own design. So have a happy fall day, everybody, and I will see you in the next video. Ciao, jewelry makers.